Welcome to County Report This Week. I'm Susan Kennedy. Thanks for joining us. Coming up in the next half hour, we'll find out how victims of the Silver Spring apartment fire are recovering from this tragedy. Thousands attend the Montgomery County Agricultural Fair, and we will stop and smell the roses at one of Brookside Garden's winning displays. But we begin with fresh off a whirlwind journey at the Olympics, Bethesda native Katie Ledecky landed at Dulles Airport this week, greeted by cheers and hugs by friends and teachers from the Stone Ridge community. It means so much to me to have their support and I felt it the whole week in Rio and to see them first thing when I get home it, it means so much to me. I hope to make as much of an impact as I can and I know it you know we all had our goals in the pool the, the US team but we also had the goal to hopefully inspire other young swimmers and other young kids uh, who are watching on TV and hopefully we did that. And what's next for Bethesda's Golden Girl? Katie will be taking a break from swimming these next few weeks as she prepares to start her first semester at Stanford this fall. It's been more than one week since an explosion and fire at a Silver Spring apartment complex sent 34 people to the hospital and claimed the lives of at least seven others. Officials are still investigating what caused the fire, and in the meantime, officials are working to assist close to 50 families with alternative housing, medical care, and assistance. Phyllis Armstrong reports on how those residents are coping with this devastating tragedy. This Silver Spring family has come to the Long Branch Community Center not for housing, but for help. They are still going through the trauma of witnessing a devastating explosion. Because everybody is um, here in, in their, their mind. Um, that voice is when the people was uh, screaming. These parents and children still have an apartment. The trouble is sleeping there. We are thinking that it's going to get a bump again. U.S. Senator Ben Cardin called the loss of life and personal belongings heartbreaking. Most of the people here have nothing left. Everything's been gone. So it's it's taking care of their basic needs and they are feel very vulnerable because their whole life is centered around their, their family and community here in Silver Spring. Local and federal investigators continue to search for the exact cause of the explosion that destroyed two buildings. Officials have said a gas leak might be a factor. The residents of the adjacent buildings should not experience a problem with their gas. If they do, they should certainly contact us. At Casa de Maryland, offices are stacked with donations. Some of the assistance is going to people who lost all they had in a Hyattsville fire that displaced 10 families on Friday. We were scared. We just got out really quick and we just got out the baby and me and so we couldn't get anything and we lost everything. Nonprofit organizations are asking the public to donate money or gift cards instead of items that have to be stored and distributed. Local officials are also working on providing the counseling services some residents need to recover from the explosion that claimed at least six lives. Phyllis Armstrong in Silver Spring for County Report this week. The county is accepting cash donations for the victims through the Montgomery Housing Partnership. Donations can be made online at mhpartners.org. Checks should be mailed to the location on your screen. Be sure to write Long Branch Fire on the checks memo line. Montgomery County Public School students head back to the classroom on August 29th, and MCPS officials are expecting about 159,000 students on the first day of school. That's about 2,500 more pupils than last year. The district's new superintendent, Dr. Jack Smith, said he plans to start the first day at a local bus depot. So I'm going to start at one of the bus depots at about 5.30 in the morning or, and uh, we'll uh, talk with uh, bus drivers and just be there and watch what happens. I went to one when I was able to visit the system back before school ended. It's great. All those buses, it's amazing. So I'll start there. Then I think if it's possible, we've discussed that I could ride a bus to one of our middle schools uh, in the morning and visit with the students on there and then just experience school as they do, getting off at one of the middle schools and then hang out there for a little while, visiting with parents as they drop off their children and 
and with the staff as they get ready for that first day and then go out and visit four or five more schools and then we'll come back here about 4.30 in the afternoon and debrief to make sure that everybody in every department is aware of any bumps we had in the road that day, anything that didn't work as well as it should, and they'd be ready for the next day of school. And it's not too late to help some students in need. Over 54,000 MCPS students receive free and reduced price meals, and many families struggle to afford basic necessities like school supplies. For just $10, you can provide a student in need with a backpack filled with school supplies for the 2016-2017 school year. Visit mcpsgivebackpacks.org for more information. And as school officials get ready for the first day, Montgomery County Police want motorists to pay attention to the school buses that will be back on the road. Here to talk with us about how the police plan to beef up its school bus camera safety enforcement program is Captain Tom Didone. Captain, thanks for being with us today. Talk a little bit about the success of this program and, and now how you're planning to expand it. Well, over the past two and a half years, we had 25 school bus safety cameras on the road. And unfortunately, we captured about 4,800 people who passed the school buses illegally. Um, that's absolutely unacceptable. And we have approximately 1,200 school buses uh, in our fleet. So if 25 cameras can be passed so many times, we knew we had a significant problem. So uh, beginning this school year, we've partnered with a new vendor and we're gonna be in the process of putting school bus safety cameras on all 1,200 school buses in the county. Now that may, will take about three years to accomplish, but by the first two weeks of school, we should have 100 cameras on the buses, which means we have approximately four times as many we did for the whole two and a half years. And these cameras will continue to grow. So it's really important we get the message out to people that you don't pass school buses. And that's, uh, we're gonna, if you do, you're gonna have to pay the fine because we're gonna have cameras on all the buses to protect our kids. Now, a lot of folks, I don't think, understand exactly um, the rules that are in place for, for getting around a school bus. Uh, what is the best advice you can give somebody if they are stopped behind a school bus? Well, if you see the school bus with that red stop sign and the flashing lights out, the safest thing that you can do is stop, especially if you're in doubt. Now, the way the law works, under Maryland law, unless there's a center median, a raised median between you and the school bus, then you must stop. Uh, just think of the phrase, paint doesn't protect. If the only thing between you and the stop school bus is paint on the ground, that's not good enough for safety for a child and you must stop under Maryland law. And if you don't stop, it is a $125 fine for passing the school bus if there's a camera on it, or if there's a police officer doing enforcement, it's $570 and three points. What else is the police department doing over the next couple weeks as we get ready for school to start to get the word out about this program? Well, we're working with um, the schools right now to make sure we send the message out. Well, we find out this time of the year that people are not prepared for the kids to be back in school. You know, traffic gets a lot worse. Um, but distracted driving and distracted crossing are huge keys. So we want to get back to that defensive driving that you learned in driver's education. Look out for each other, expect the unexpected, and realize when children are out there, anything can happen. And we as adults and drivers have the responsibility to proceed extra carefully, especially this time of the year. Okay, some great information for our viewers. Thank you so much, Captain Tom Didone, Montgomery County Police. Thank you for having me. Up next on County Report this week, a special appointment for a county councilman and the city of Gaithersburg unveils a tribute to a favorite son. We'll be right back. Interested in career success? Get to Montgomery College and we'll get you going. You can earn an associate's degree in only two years. With three campuses, award-winning faculty, and multiple online learning opportunities, Montgomery College will empower you to set your course and succeed. Want to pursue a bachelor's degree? If you start at MC, you can save a third on total tuition costs of a four-year program. Apply today. Did you know there are more than 10,000 county government phone numbers? 
but there's only one number you need to remember for non-emergency calls, 311. MC311 is Montgomery County government's online telephone information system. Need information? Have a problem or complaint? Trying to locate a county government facility? Call 311. The call center is open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The website is available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Welcome back to County Report this week. The CNO Canal is a national treasure and a huge asset to our county. This historic trail stretches 184 miles from Georgetown to Hagerstown, and it was a transportation lifeline for communities along the Potomac River. Recently, Council Vice President Roger Berliner was appointed to the CNO Canal National Historic Park Commission to represent Montgomery County. Berliner was appointed by the Secretary of the Interior and will serve on the commission for a five-year term. The Board of Directors for the Montgomery County Economic Development Corporation has chosen its first CEO. David Petter is an economic development veteran who will join the Montgomery team from the Central Florida Development Council, where he was the president and CEO. The county's new public-private venture is committed to growing the business community. Jacob Sesker is the Chief Strategy Officer for the Economic Development Corporation, and he told us about Mr. Petter and what he brings to the table. Well, after doing a national search, the board concluded that David was, uh, that his marketing and advertising background were exactly what Montgomery County Economic Development Corporation needed. Um, he also brings a very strong track record of getting economic development organizations off the ground and running. Uh, he's done so successfully a couple of times in recent years, and we're looking forward to him bringing that success to Montgomery County. Last year, the County Council voted to eliminate the County Department of Economic Development and replace it with a nonprofit economic development corporation. The organization is tasked with marketing and attracting new businesses to the county, as well as helping existing businesses remain in the county and expand. In order to achieve um, MCEDC's mission of attracting as much investment as possible um, and helping the businesses that are here stay here and grow, we're going to be going out and listening to the businesses in Montgomery County um, and, and to our institutional and organizational partners to figure out how we can best support them uh, in their efforts to strengthen Montgomery County's economy. David Petter will take over the leadership position on September 6th. It's time to find out who are the speakers of the Montgomery College Most Prestigious Lecture Series. Danielle Stesky joins us with more. We are a few days away from the official beginning of the school year, but here at Montgomery College, we already have the lineup of the speakers of the fall semester for the Frank Islam Athenian Symposium Speaker Series. Next to me is Joan Nake, she's the director of the series. Joan, we're going to have five leading experts in the semester. In November, we're going to have an important election. We will choose our next president. And we might have a woman leading us next year. So what can we look forward to? Well, we can look forward to author Mary Ann Schnall discussing her book, What Will It Take to Make a Woman President? It's a wonderful book and I think a very timely topic for an possibly an historic event in which we elect the first woman president of the United States. In addition, we can look forward to hearing from Thomas Frank and his book is called Listen Liberal. And in this book, he takes to task the Democratic Party and liberals for failing to increase the middle class and also for failing to decrease the rift between the rich and the poor in America. This is so timely. What else will be covered? Well, we're going to have some global topics as well. We have Nadia Hashimi, who's going to be discussing her book, The Pearl That Broke Its Shell. It's a wonderful book about the culture of Afghanistan and two generation of women in Afghanistan and how they survive. And we're also going to have U.S. Ambassador Delano Lewis, who will be discussing race and race relations in the United States. Thanks, this sounds very exciting. Well, the Athenaeum Symposium Speaker Series kicks off on September 15th with Thomas Frank at 7 p.m. here at Globe Hall, Montgomery College, Germantown campus. The city of Gaithersburg is home to more than 20 exciting permanent public artworks that transform city streets, housing complexes, and public parks into places of meaning and community engagement. On May 23rd, Gaithersburg installed a new addition to their collection. 
I think what we need to do is measure out from here and here. See what that well, the purpose of this sculpture is to create an environment that's inviting for people to come and spend time with Maribor. Three, two, one. All right. All right. All right. Ed Bohr was Mr. Gaithersburg. He was born here, he grew up here, he had a business here, and he raised his family here. It's an awesome idea, um, and we were waiting to see it come to fruition. This is our newest sculpture in the whole collection of about 27 artworks. So we have him s seated on a, a bench where anybody can just plop down and have a conversation with, with Mayor Borg. Public art is an incredible part of a city's demonstration of its vitality, of its cultural life, and having a strong public art vitality is part of that overall thing that sways people to come to the city of Gaithersburg. Coming up on County Report this week, sew it, grow it, show it. We'll take you to the Montgomery County Fair and see how the week panned out. And a day of pomp and circumstance for some county high school seniors. We will have those stories and more right after this. So, I'm kind of new here but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. Welcome back to County Report this week. Thousands attended this year's Montgomery County Agricultural Fair. It's one of the largest events in the county and features something fun for everyone. My MC Media's Maureen Chowdhury reports. The Montgomery County Agricultural Fair is officially in full swing. The fair, which dates back to 1949, is one of the largest events in the county. Fairgoers can experience a variety of foods, games, and a few new attractions. Patrons come and they always love the pig races that are here and that's a free event. Um, we have Pepco Community Stage that always has free concerts and, and bands playing. Um, we have a comedy hypnist and an extreme illusionist that are pep on Pepco. Uh, we have grandstand events, our demolition derby, and um, monster trucks are always great hits as well. As far as what's unique and special is our high shark encounter. We have a couple new food vendors that are here this year. We have some new kid zone stuff going on. So what are people looking forward to at the fair this year? I really came for the rides and for the good food. Lots of fried food. Pigs. What about the pigs? I like their yummy to eat. The um, arts and crafts and the plants. I like that. I drove down yesterday because I used to live in Gaithersburg. I had to see it again. I used to come down every year when I lived here. That was about 25 years. My niece, she's just turned one, so her mother wanted to bring her out here. Uh, what are you looking forward to showing her and seeing yourself? I, uh, I think right now she just wants to see the animals because she's learning her, uh, you know, the names of the animals and the sounds they make. Well, I like all the animals, the horses, the ducks, the sheep, the cows, the pigs. I just like looking at the animals, but with my grandson here, he wants to do the rides. I really like the rides. That's like being scared. Whether you're looking for a thrill, filling up on fried Oreos, or just celebrating the last days of summer with family, there's something fun for everyone at this year's County Fair. In Gaithersburg, I'm Maureen Chaudhry for County Report This Week. Montgomery County Public Schools held its 2016 Regional High School Summer School graduation. MCPS-TV brings you that story from Richard Montgomery High School in Rockville. I'm honored to welcome you to the commencement ceremony for Montgomery County Public Schools Summer Class of 2016. More than 100 students from many of Montgomery County's 25 high schools received their diplomas August 11th. Montgomery These graduates Blair of the high class school. of 2016 completed their studies through the MCPS Regional High School Summer Program. 
many students are participating and are finishing over the summer due to various situations that needed to extend their senior year. We have a few students this summer who are actually graduating high school in three years and are going to be using summer school to help them graduate early so that they can go on to begin either a career of work or to go to college. So we're very excited and we're happy to be able to celebrate with all of the families this uh, summer. I wanted to graduate early because I just wanted to get a jump start on um, my college career and getting started studying because I really want to do business and engineering. The featured speaker was Dr. D. Rian Pollard, the president of Montgomery College. I am proud as an MCPS parent, but also as a member of this community, that we have a community where we advance tolerance and we work to include everyone. If you were born in another country, stand up and say, I belong. We are so happy because, you know, my daughter did it after I come from Honduras. So I came here in 2010, uh, no English, so I had to learn it here. Uh, I've been in MCPS ever since, and hopefully I'll continue at MC and medical school. After the graduates received their diplomas and marched across the stage, they talked about their next steps in life. I'm intending on going to MC for about a year and a half and then going to transfer to Stevenson University to study communications. And I'm going into secondary education English to be a teacher. It's time for you to put your money where your heart is and help out some Rockville nonprofits. Rock 11 Now's Willie James Inman is here to tell us how. Get ready to shop and save to benefit local nonprofits. Rockville Rewards reboots this September. The Rockville Rewards program is funded by a grant from the city of Rockville, and the program allows businesses to sign up to offer uh, a discount to people who hold the card, and the people who sell the cards are local nonprofits. The Student Ambassador Program started as a way to give students a leadership role at the college. One year they were invited to speak at a national conference about their program and about how they worked with first year students. We had no money. And our provost at the time recommended that we might want to think about the Rockville Reward Card Program as a way of raising the money to go on the trip. And we actually have classes, special needs classes, and work, um, we work directly with Special Olympics Maryland. Um, this last year we started a dance program with Special Olympics Maryland. We had over 50 kids sign up for it. And for all you savvy shoppers out there, remember you can purchase your card for $25 at any participating nonprofit or online. Just head over to rockvillerewards.com for more information. For County Report This Week, I'm Willie James Inman. Coming up next on County Report This Week, a free outdoor movie series kicks off in downtown Silver Spring. And we'll show you what's in bloom at Brookside Gardens. Stay with us. In Montgomery County, we have a goal to reduce waste and recycle 70% of all waste by 2020. By recycling and reducing waste, we save natural resources and make our community even better. So recycle at home, work, school, everywhere, and keep recycling going. For more information, call the Montgomery County, Maryland Division of Solid Waste Services at 311 or visit montgomerycountymd.gov slash recycling. Keep it going. Recycle more now. Welcome back. A series of free Friday outdoor movies is in full swing in downtown Silver Spring. The Silver Screen series is taking place on Veterans Plaza where movies are being shown on a large screen for the next few Friday nights. Council member Tom Hucker is one of the sponsors of the series. The movies will begin after dusk and if you plan on going, bring a blanket for seating. Silver Spring, Tacoma Park, and the surrounding areas are home to one of the fastest growing and most diverse restaurant scenes in the region. 
Silver Spring Tacoma Park Restaurant Week 2016 is a six-day celebration highlighting the variety of delicious fine dining options available in that area. Over 20 participating restaurants will offer diners special two and three course menus at terrific prices the week of Tuesday, September 6th through the 11th. No tickets or special passes are needed, but reservations are highly recommended for the week of this event. And it does look like it will be cooling off just a little bit next week. So if you are looking for one last activity before the kids go back to school, consider visiting the Rose Garden at Brookside Gardens. It's open daily and the admission is free. Here's more about this glorious garden and some tips on growing roses of your own at home. We are here at Brookside Gardens on a beautiful windy day today in the Rose Garden. I am Roger Haynes, I'm the, the uh, caretaker. Somebody said I was the curator. I'm not the curator, I'm the curator of the Rose Garden. I've been here for 35 years and it'd be 36 years in September. This has been my pet project for the whole time that I've been here. That's what the flower looks like when it's coming open. This is what the bud looks like when it's coming on. This Rose Garden that people can come and see is about 10,000 square feet of bed space and where the roses are planted. It has approximately a thousand plants, maybe a hundred different varieties. And there's a difference between a variety of a rose and a type of rose. We have climbers, which are a type, but the variety are the name, names of the, of the plants themselves. This particular rose is called Sentimental, and it's S-C-E-N-T, so it's got a very good fragrance if you wanted to take and sniff it. You wanted to smell it? Yeah, look, smell this rose. Does it smell good? Mm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> One of my favorite roses is this Double Delight rose. It's called Double Delight, not because of the two colors, but because of the two colors and the fact that it's got a knock your socks off fragrance. Roses, just generally speaking, need about an inch of water a week. They need six hours of direct sun every day. Good air circulation, which we're having today. Beyond that, they need regular pruning, trimming, and that sort of thing just to keep them looking well. Wow. This is a process called deadheading. We take the flowers off that are starting to go bad. The centers are all dried up and the flowers are starting to show spots and not look very good. This is uh, essentially trash. We compost all this stuff and Quite frankly, I think I have the prettiest trash in town. Most people, when they think of a rose, they think of the fragrance that goes with it. One of the things that I've been trying to do when roses need to be replaced is replace them with roses that have a heavy fragrance. My desire is to be able to have people smell the rose garden from the parking lot. For more information on the rose garden or other programs at Brookside, visit their website at brooksidegardens.org. Now it's time to meet our pet of the week. Catherine Zanzano joins us from the Montgomery County Animal Services and Adoption Center with more. Catherine? Hi, I'm here in the small animal room at the Montgomery County Animal Services and Adoption Center and I'm here with Batman and Robin. They are two three-year-old guinea pigs. They are two of several guinea pigs that we have available here at the Adoption Center. At this time of year, we are very busy and have many animals that are available for adoption and looking for good homes. One thing that people are not aware of is we have a large variety of small animals that are available for adoption at the center. Anything from guinea pigs, rabbits, hamsters, and more. So we ask that people visit our website or actually come on down here to the adoption center and see what we have available. And with that, we close this edition of County Report this week. Remember to like us on Facebook and to join us again at this time every week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. We're going to leave you with some sights and sounds from the Montgomery County Agricultural Fair. I'm Susan Kennedy. Thank you for watching. Big pile up there in the back stretch. We'll see how they get going. Here. Leaders, Dixon, Maryland, Lottery, Mineral, and Federal Credit Union.